All right. Give it up for the storyteller again. How are you guys feeling today? Everybody feeling good? Everybody have a good breakfast? Who here had a good, healthy, well-balanced breakfast? Who here had a Pepsi and a donut? Yeah. That's <laughs> My name is Anthony, as she said. Some people call me the singing storyteller. Adults, I know Johnny Cash had it first, but I'm using it now. Because I also like to uh, sing and tell stories. I brought my instrument with me. You guys know what this is, right? Of course you do. I've actually been singing way longer than I've been telling stories many, many, many years, but most of that time, only in the shower. Any other shower singers here? Raise your hand if you like to prove it. I thought you looked like the type. Yeah. What happened was I got tired of getting shocked by the microphone all the time, so I decided I'd come out of the shower and come to play and sing for people. So I'm going to do a, a song and a story this morning. I'm going to do one of my favorite songs. It's actually a pretty old song, but I only learned it a few years ago from uh, someone that many of us st storytellers know named Bill Harley. The song's called I'm Not Small. I'm going to show you how it goes. And then I'd like you to sing it along with me and help out. You know what? You guys probably haven't warmed up your voices yet, have you? We should do that real fast. Let's take care of that. Repeat after me if you would. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti. Oh, you guys are plenty more here. I'm not small, it goes like this. I'm not small, I'm so tall, I can carry the moon on my back. When it glows, I am glow too. That's not very hard to do. Well, I'm not small, I'm so tall, I can carry the moon on my back. Try to sing with me if you could. I'm not small, I'm so tall. I can carry a tree on my back. As you sing, imagine yourself carrying a big tree right across your shoulders. Ready? Well, I'm not small, I'm so tall. I can carry a tree on my back. And when it grows, when it grows, I'll grow too. That's not very hard to do. Well, I'm not small, I'm so tall. I can carry a tree on my back. At this point in the song, I start to get a little fuzzy on the words. Can anybody here think of something really big that we could carry on our back and put in the song? What's your idea, young man? A giant. What's a giant do? He does what? What's a giant do? Does he stomp? Let's try stomp. Well, I'm not small. I'm so tall. I can carry a giant on my back. And when he stops, I'll stop too. That's not very hard to do. Well, I'm not small. I'm so tall. I can carry a giant on my back. Very good suggestion. Who else has one? What's your idea? Something really big. Did you forget? What is it? A big house. A big house. What's a big house do? <laughs> it just stands. It just stands. Well, I'm not small, I'm so tall, I can carry a big house on my back. And when it just stands, I'll just stand too. That's not very hard to do. Well, I'm not small, I'm so tall, I can carry a big house on my back. Who else has a suggestion? Something really big? What's your idea? Boulder. I've never heard that one. It's a great idea. What's a boulder do? What's a boulder do? Who can help out? What's a boulder do? Rolls. Rolls, I like that. Does that work for you? Let's try it. Well, I'm not small. I'm so tall. I can carry a boulder on my back. When it rolls, I'll roll too. That's not very hard to do. Well, I'm not small. I'm so tall. I can carry a big boulder on my back. I know everybody here probably has an idea, so why don't we do this? Let's take a few moments, big people too, to close your eyes and imagine something really big we can carry on our backs and put into this song. Don't say it out yet. Don't say it out loud. What I want you to do is get a vivid image of it in your mind's eye. What I'm going to do is count to three. When I get to three, I want you to shout out that thing, that really big thing, as loud as you can, once and once only. Okay, you have an idea? All right, on three, I want you to shout it out one time as loud as you can. One, 
two, three. Oh. All right, we're going to take all your ideas and put them together, sing in our loudest, proudest voices. I'm not small, I'm so tall I can carry the world on my back. And that has all your ideas in it. Let's give it a try. I'm not small, I'm so tall I can carry the world on my back. And when it turns, when it turns, I'll turn too. That's not very hard to do. Well, I'm not small, I'm so tall I can carry the world on my back. Give yourselves a nice round of applause. a story that is actually a cross between a folk tale from Borneo and a fable from Aesop. You've heard of that guy before, right? It's called The Most Important Pup. And it goes like this. Once, and thank goodness it was only once, for some reason, several parts of the body started to argue with one another. They were arguing about which one of them is the most important. Now, I'm not sure how it actually went. I didn't see the argument happen, but I heard it went something like this. <clears throat> I'm the most important part, declared the arm. Well, I'm the strongest. I do all the heavy lifting around here. If it weren't for me lifting food to the mouth, body would go hungry. That's why I am the most important. Big deal, said the hand. Why, if it weren't for me reaching out, grabbing the food and picking it up, you'd never be able to lift it to the mouth. Body would go hungry. That's why I'm the most important. <laughs> I think you're both wrong, said the foot. Why, if it weren't for me moving the body to where the food's at, you'd never be able to grab it or lift it either one. I'm the most important. Foot, pipe down down there, said the leg. If it weren't for me, you'd be nothing but meat on the floor. I'm the one who does all the moving around this place. Well. I think you're all wrong, said the head. And since I'm the only one of us who can think, I should know. Why, if it weren't for me forming the images about where the food is located, you'd never be able to move the body there to get it. That's why I'm the most important, and I am the smartest. Well, I think you're wrong about that head, said the eye. If it weren't for me looking out, seeing where the food's at, You'd never be able to form the images. You wouldn't know where to go. Obviously, I am the most important. Well, I heard, said the ear, some bodies get along just fine without the eye. I guess that means you're not the most important. Hey, 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 what about me, said the mouth. Hey, I can do all sorts of stuff. I can whistle. I can sing. Wow, I feel good. Na, 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 na. I can do tricks like this. Can you do that? Give it a try. No, you can do that, and I am the loudest. Mouth, another part said, you're just running off at the you again. As soon as Mouth got into the argument, it got 10 times noisier and 10 times nastier. As back and forth and forth and back again, these bickering body parts went on and on and on and on about which of them is the most important. I should pause here and point out that there were some parts of the body that stayed out of the argument. Parts that kind of knew they weren't the most important. Like, for example, um, toenail. What's toenail do? It just sits on the end of the toe collecting dirt and fungus? Toenail had no delusions of grandeur about being the most important. And then there was, well, hair. Hair knew it wasn't the most important because when the body came into the world, hair wasn't there very much. And now that the body was getting older, well, Hair was pretty rare. <laughs> Appendix. Appendix had never quite figured out his purpose in life anyway, so he stayed out of the argument. Oh, oh, belly button. Belly button actually considered making a case that the job of lint collection is an extremely important one, but belly button stayed out of it too. Oh, eyelash batted around the idea of getting in. An eyebrow was a little arch over the whole issue, but they stayed out too. So back and forth and forth and back again, these big green body parts went on and on and on and on about which is the most important. Until one very stubborn part decided he was going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that he was the most important by going on strike. He was going to quit doing his job. When I quit doing my job, I'll prove body can't get along without me. 
And when that part made that decision, all the other parts decided to do the same thing. All at once, they stopped doing their jobs. And foot planted itself, and leg locked, and hand clenched, and arm dropped, and eye closed, and mouth shut, and head tuned out. After some time went by, another, another body part that had not yet made his presence known began to speak up. Hey, what's that noise? I know what that is. That's stomach. He's complaining because there's no food in him. I'm sorry, big boy, you're just going to have to wait. We have an important issue to settle here among us. Stomach didn't care about their little argument. His complaints just grew noisier. Until something else happened. Stomach got really quiet. And all the other body parts began to feel weak and lifeless. Like they were running out of energy. And leg got wobbly. And arm got droopy. And I got bleary and head got weary. <laughs> and at last, one pretty smart body part said, you know, maybe stomach has a pretty good point. Maybe some food would be a good idea right about now. To which arm and hand said together, well, we'd love to grab some food and lift it to the mouth if there were any to grab onto. To which foot and leg said together, we'd love to carry the body to where you could pick up some food if we knew where the food's located. To which head said, I would know where the food's located if I could look and see where the food's at. And lastly, maybe a little bit reluctantly, I opened it. And there, not too far from the body, stood one magnificent apple tree. Those apples were delicious. On that, all the parts of the body agreed. Now, after hearing this, you might wonder which part of the body truly is the most important. And you know what? I really don't know for sure. And in my opinion, it doesn't matter anyway, because I think that the most important part when it comes to the parts of the body is how wonderfully they work together. Thank you. Hello, boys and girls and moms and dads. I've been in Georgia for 47 years, so Miss Thursday's old, I was 10 when we moved to Georgia. But I'm always going to sound like this, I'm always going to have an accent, because I was 10, too old to lose it. I want to tell you a story about Lion and about a little critter named Anansi, who's a trickster, but before I do that, I want to play an instrument that ended up in Cuba from Spain, okay? And I want you to hear it. These are called castanets. Say that with me. Castanets. 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 Let's say it in Spanish. Castanuelas. Castanuelas. Water. What ocean is to our east? Do we have anyone? Think about it. Right there, here, here. It's not the Pacific, so it's the Atlantic. The Atlantic. The stories that came from Cuba cross the Atlantic, from Europe, from West Africa. And I'm going to tell you one that ended in Cuba from West Africa. I want you to hear the song. Okay. And the and, and the castanets ended in Cuba from Europe, from a country named Spain. Uh, I want to tell you, I want to sing a song for you in English, and then I'm going to teach you the words in Spanish, and we're going to be singing it during the sh during the, the story. It goes like this: León tenía una sopa, León tenía una sopa, León tenía una sopa, y yo me la comí. Which means, sing it with me. We sing a lot, guys. Lion had a soup. Lion had a 
And it's the, it's the adult thing. I'm not going to tell anyone. Lion had a suit. Lion had a suit. And you go like this. And we ate it up. And we ate it up. And I ate it up. And I ate it up. Guys, Anansi is a lot like Bugs Bunny. You know how Bugs Bunny likes to trick other animals and he's just not very well behaved? Anansi sounds that, that way. He's also a lot like an animal that we have in the South called Br'er Rabbit. See, I think Bugs Bunny is Br'er Rabbit's great, 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 great grandchild. <laughs> okay, that's how I think it works. And so Anansi is a trickster. He had tricked, and this is important, he had tricked all of the animals in the island. Warthog, gorilla, rhinoceros, snake, hippopotamo, hippo, rhinoceronte, rhino. He had not tricked lion, his buddy, or the little monkeys who lived in the islands. And remember that. Now, do you know what a plantain is? Have you ever been adults to the grocery store and you see some bananas that are very big and if you try to peel them, sometimes they're green, sometimes they're beginning to turn green and black, I mean, green and black, sometimes they're yellow and black, and sometimes they're all black, you can't eat those. If you try to peel them, it's very hard to peel them. You have to cook them first. They're in the banana family, they're called plantains. And with plantains, you can make a soup. A chicken, with, and I can't say my sandwiches, but that's what I mean. Chicken soup, you know, broth. Well, it's called sopita de platano plantain soup. So one day, Anansi goes to his friend, Lion, and he says, Lion, Lion, what is it, my little friend, what is it? Lion, Lion, in the middle of our island, there's a pond. I've never seen this pond. There's a pond surrounded by palm trees, banana plants. Let's go swimming. What a good idea, my little friend, because the sea is very rough today. I need to be refreshed. But Mrs. Lion has made for me sopita de platano, plantain soup. Looked a little bit like the bottom of the gourd. Besides, it also sounded like a little tune because he played it. He played the little container where he put the soup. And he played like this a little tune that he liked to sing, and you're going to hear it again in a minute. This is a thumb piano. For me, so be that platinum plantain soup, and I'm not going to share it with you. And Lion and Anansi said, I don't like plantain soup anyway. So Lion upright walked and walked and walked, carrying his little pot of soup. And Anansi walked, and so far he hadn't tricked Lion, guys. For there in the middle of the island was a pond. It was so clear, you could see the fish, the sand, the shells. <coughs> Surrounded by palm trees, and what else? Banana? Plants. And there was a tree stump. And so Lion placed his little pot of soup on the tree stump. And he was very impetuous, which means he could not wait for things to happen. And he jumped right in and started to swim. Oh, how delicious, my friend. What a great idea. Thank you for inviting me to go swimming with you. By this time, Anansi had climbed the tree stump. He was sitting next to the sofa, the soup. And what was he thinking? Eating the soup. OK, that's what he was, that's what he was thinking. So he said, Leon, Leon, what is it, my little friend? What is it? The animals have been talking about you. What are they saying? That I am tremendously courageous, magnificent lion? They're saying that you are cobarde. A coward? I am not afraid of anything. What am I supposed to be afraid of? Deep water like this one. Well, I'll show you. I'm going to dive down to the bottom of the pond. I'm going to bring you back a ball full of sand and shells. And you're going to see that I'm not afraid of anything. So he dove down to the bottom of the pond, and it was a deep pond. What happened to the soup, guys? Help me. He ate it, and then with his egg little legs, he rubbed his little spider tummy. Oh, it was so good, and pretended to wait for the lion to surface, and he did with the paw full of sand. And he said, did you see me? I'm not afraid of anything. I am magnificent. I am el leon magnifico. And so he said, you are great, lion. I'm going to tell all my friends, jirafa, rhinoceronte, elefante, hippopotamo. I'm going to tell them that you're not afraid of anything. Listen, my friend, you asked me to go swim and get in the water. Lion, lion, what is it, my little friend? Can you get close to the tree stump? Of course, and he got close to the tree stump. Can I jump onto your belly? Why? Because the water is cold, and if I peek at you, splash me. Well, when I'm swimming, I'm supposed to splash you. The water is supposed to be cold. Just for a little bit until I get used to it. So he said, come on, hop on. 
So he jumped onto Lion's belly, and Lion started to back stroke. And he said, how are you, my little friend? I don't feel so good. What do you mean, my little friend? I think Anansi's going to get sick. <laughs> what do you mean, my little friend? I think Anansi's going to get sick, and he's going to get sick on your belly. You get off my belly, you silly spider, and you dare get sick. And he took him back to shore, and he said, go home and get well. Now, Anansi faked it. He wasn't sick. But was he in trouble, guys? What was he in trouble? He ate the soup. So Lion stayed in the pond swimming, and he was having a delicious and wonderful time. And on his way home, he went by the place where the little monkeys were living. And he had never tricked them. Remember I told you that? And they were having a party that night. They were doing their little monkey song. Do it with me. Anansi. 
And he's been looking, do we want that to be led to an embassy? So that's why the spiders here in Missouri, in Jeff City, that's why they hide in the corners, not in the bushes. They're hiding from an embassy, I mean, from lions. They don't ever want to be found again. And they say that long, long ago, little monkeys used to live peacefully on the ground. But when lions came and said, say it again, I'll give you sticky, sticky, like a lion. I'll give you sticky, sticky. They climbed the highest trees. And if you were to go to one of the islands in the Caribbean where I was born, and you walk by one of those trees, you'll hear them singing joyfully, but safely. And we ate it up, ticky ticky, and we ate it up, ticky ticky, and we ate it up, ticky ticky. Give yourself that. Now, Mommy had to go to the store to do some grocery shopping for dinner, and she told her daughter not to leave the house until she got back. Well, the little girl might have a mama for a little while. <laughs> then she got her own mind to do her own thing. She went up to the forest picking flowers. She didn't take a buddy with her. She didn't ask permission. Did you even know to tell her Mommy where she had gone? While she was off in the forest without permission, she ran into something called the Gunny Wolf. The Gunny Wolf. And this is the story of a little girl and the Gunny Wolf. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was this little girl who lived with her mommy and daddy. Now, daddy was at work. Now, mommy had to go to the store to do some grocery shopping for dinner, and she told her daughter, honey, honey, come here, I have something to tell you. The girl said, yeah, mommy, what you want, mommy? Yeah, mommy, what you want, mommy? And I said, be still, you're making me dizzy, you? okay. <laughs> I'll be still, mommy. <laughs> honey, you look like a washing machine. <laughs> okay, I'll be still. <laughs> nice, you look like a bubble head now. <laughs> Be still! Yes, ma'am! I need to tell you something. Give me your ear. I want my ears! <laughs> uh, I want to tell you something, child. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I need to run to the store to do some grocery shopping for you and Daddy for dinner. I want you to stay in the house. Don't leave until we get back. All right, Mommy. I won't leave until you get back. I I'll play with my Barbie doll. <laughs> You dress Barbie, I'll be right back. Okay, Mommy, just me and she. <laughs> Say bye, Barbie. Bye, Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> mommy, we got the remaining man. <laughs> she drove on the snooks. <laughs> <laughs> Little girl, Barbie, y'all push her, brush her hair. <laughs> 100 strokes. 98, 99, 100. <laughs> I'll do some accessorizing. Oh, look at the cute shoes. <laughs> Let me find your fashion purse. <laughs> we, may, we may have to go to Marshall's. <laughs> After a while, she got bored. Boy, am I bored. I am really, really bored. <laughs> Why did I go to this door too? Silly Barbie now. I'm trying to play me for you. I want to do something else. I put up some television. The Wiggles. Ah! Oh, it was really scary. <laughs> I'm too old for the Wiggles. I want to do something else. Whoa. She looked outside the picture window. Off in the forest, there were big, huge fields of yellow flowers in bloom. She saw the yellow flowers. Woo! <laughs> Before mommy comes back, I can go pick those yellow flowers and she can put them in her vase. 
make a second piece on the dining room table. She forgot her promise to stay home. She didn't take a buddy with her, didn't leave a note. Went by herself picking yellow flowers and singing a little song to herself going, da 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 Further in the forest, she saw red flowers growing. Woo! Red flowers! Too. And Monica put them in her paws. <laughs> <laughs> and Lincoln sent the piece with the daddy good table. She went further south the forest picking red flowers, singing. Da 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 Further in the forest, guys, there were purple flowers growing. Purple! My most favorite color! She went further south the forest picking and singing. Da 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 da. And then she heard a voice from behind the tree. Little girl, come here. Uh oh. <laughs> Little girl, come here. Who's talking? Over here. Ooh. Right in front of her was a big tree, and a big old hairy paw came from behind the tree. Little girl, come here. You're talking to me. You're talking to me. Yeah, come here. <laughs> what? She went to the tree to see who was calling her. But when she got to the tree, she rounded it to the other side. His mouth had big old white sharp doggy teeth and then white slaughter ran out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he got all caught up in his chest hair. <laughs> he had big old claws on his paws and a big bushy tail. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, little girl, you didn't mind your mama, did you? Why for you move when she told you not to? And she said, I will move. <laughs> you didn't? No, sir. Good, good. Let's sing that good sea song for me. I like it. She had to sing for the gummy roll. You know, he loved that song. If Biggie is on the feather, yeah, that's the one, that's the one. <laughs> he sang with her. Da 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 And she was running home, but the honey would woke up and chase him. <laughs> <laughs> Little girl, why for you moving your mama told you not to? I knew. <laughs> you didn't? No, sir. Good, good, good. Sing that good sweet song for me. I like it. She had the same funny gummy whoop again. Da 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 Sing it! I like to 
big old booby. Little girl bothered her mommy from that day 